Hey, what's up, shitheads? Welcome back to the Wired Range Test Channel. Today's video, well, you guessed it, we're going to be doing yet another range test on the Wired Freedom. No, I'm not just doing this because I've ran out of video ideas. I've watched a few other range tests, and it seems like people are getting significantly more range than I am. And I believe that to be due to the fact that I had Tannis tire armor installed in my tires. Now, these things are great, don't get me wrong. They offer you a ton of protection against flats. You can ride through thorns. You can do all sorts of things with these. But I do have a sneaking suspicion that these are eating up some of the range. And that's due to the fact there's a good quarter inch of foam on these that's going to add increased rolling resistance no matter what you have your tubes inflated to. It's actually kind of a good thing if you have a hardtail bike. These will make your ride a little softer. Today we're going to be seeing if these in fact do eat up some of your range. I've taken these out. I have since added 16 ounces of flat out on each of these tubes. Because I think if you're riding around one of these bikes with no flat protection at all, you're a complete madman. These fat tires love to grab things off the road. So you're asking to get a flat with the fat tire bike. You need to have some sort of flat protection. So today's video aims to prove if there's a difference in range between Tannis tire armor and flat out tube sealing. Guys, I absolutely can't wait to find out what the difference is. Put down in the comments what you think the range is going to be. Whoever gets the closest guess will win this free cat. Actually, anyone who comments at all, you can take this cat. Somebody please take this cat. All right, guys, so that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and get outside and see. Come on, let's go. Come on, guys, let's go. Hurry up, let's go. What are you waiting for? Come on. All right, guys, we are out on the Wired Freedom. I'm gonna do my best to recreate the same exact course that I did last time. We're gonna be in pedal assist three the entire time. And I'll be using this throttle sparingly. This is the nicest day of the year so far. Haven't had much good riding weather. It's been raining so much, or it's been cold when it's not raining, or windy. But today, got a little bit of wind, but you can see it's nice and sunny out. I'm actually wearing shorts. This is a good day, guys. So I'm super curious to see how much range difference this makes. I'm guessing it's gonna be a couple miles, but you never know. It's probably about 65 degrees out. Oh, why don't I just check my handy dandy thermometer, temperature gauge here. It is 69 degrees. 69, dudes! This is perfect. One of those days where you're not gonna get too hot and it's not too cold. The porridge is just right. This is Arturo's old work, historic landmark in Antioch. I inflated these tires to the same, had those tires inflated to 18 PSI, and that's what I did with this. And I did put a new rear cassette on the bike, but the only thing that's different on the rear cassette is the lowest gear has six more teeth. So that shouldn't affect this range test because I'm not using the lowest gear. I do really like the, uh, the new rear cassette though. Pedaling around in the lowest gear is noticeably better. According to my math, it's 18% difference, so it's a pretty big difference on the low end. Wired had on their site up until a couple days ago that these bikes had 11 by 34 rear cassettes, and they changed it now. It says 11 to 28, which is what I've seen all of them ship out with. It's time to count how many RVs. Last time was 35. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So four more than last time, guys. So one of the comments said that uh, the poverty tourism was kind of weird. Hey, I'm not going out of my way to see it. This is the normal way I go to hit the bike trail. Isn't this a weird sign? It says illegal dumping is a crime. Isn't that implied by the name illegal? Okay, I won't do the same jokes the whole time. It's rubber. It's made out of rubber. To stay consistent, we're gonna take this little offshoot here. The unrestricted, because it's specifically labeled no bikes, but you know what? We don't follow the rules, do we guys? This is a nice test for the full suspension too. You know, a little funny story. When I first got my Turbo Levo, oh, it's the, 
amazing headlights slapping there. When I first got my Turbo Levo, I was coming through here and I was king of the mountain on Strava. You know, of course I am because I'm just a really good rider. You know, I'm a, just better than everyone else. But then I realized, because somebody reported me, that I was uh, using an e-bike on the non-e-bike times. Honestly, guys, I didn't know there was separate things. I just got Strava and started recording. You know, people just don't like it that I'm faster than them. Hello. Sorry, ma'am, I'm unrestricted and I'm a YouTuber. Coming through. Shortcut time. Oh, and we saw squirrels. <laughs> so we're at 9.6 miles right now. 63.4 resting voltage. Let's keep going. I also realized uh, this is a new camera I'm using. You guys can't see it because, the, you know, it's recording right now. But this is a DJI Action 4. So far, I really like it. The battery life is way better than the GoPro. I can use it with no adapters, with a, a wireless mic. With the GoPro, you buy the GoPro and you have to buy a mod case if you want to use it with an external mic, which is super annoying. So I just got tired of like buying into that GoPro system. My last camera was a GoPro 8. That thing had quite a long lifespan. I still really liked the image out of it, but the battery life was bad and uh, I didn't like running adapters and all that. Oh, plus this has a magnetic, magnetic mount system. I can take the camera on and off like that. With the GoPro, you have to screw and unscrew it every time you want to use it. And every time you want to take it off the mount. So this is super handy. Let's clip this back on here. That was not weird at all. So this is where my GoPro died last time, but I see, I've seen kids out here riding their Surons around. So we're gonna be like a Surron kid right now. Hopefully this isn't too muddy. Ooh. Hopefully I don't scrape my legs up too much because I am wearing shorts today. Oh gosh. Ooh. like I'm a lawnmower right now. All right, we made it out of there. I did use up some throttle, so we are still at four bars right now. Showing 59.7 volts under load. That was fun, wasn't it? I mentioned this before in another video, but why don't you ride around for a while? If there's squirrels in your area, you'll start to realize that squirrels are the stupidest animals on the face of the planet. Because as soon as they see you, their instinct isn't to run away, no. It's to run directly in front of you. They run right across the trail. I've hit the tail of one, my sister hit one, always getting right in the way. Let me know if you guys have had that same problem. It feels like the bike is just rolling faster. Like I'm not pedaling and it's just coasting easier. So I don't know. Take that for you, whatever scientific evidence you want. Right now we're at 61.5 volts or so resting voltage and we're at 14 and a half miles. I'm having a good time. This is a very nice weather today. Perfect weather. Perfect weather to go terrorize people on a wired freedom. <laughs> Gotta hit them with the bell sometimes guys. Hi, I'm a YouTuber. Oh, you guys should have seen it. I got about 10 feet of air off of that. Major development, guys. We're finally down to three bars. Under load, we're at 59.4 volts. Got the wind blowing through what's left of my hair. It's a great way to spend the day. Making videos for, the, for you guys who I love so much, but also don't know at all.
Hello. Ooh, more e-bikes. Last time I did this ride, I was exactly at 20 miles at this point. Right now I'm at 19.8. I'm at 60.1 volts at rest. So there's miss, I'm missing two tenths of a mile. I might have to go back and look for it and see if I can find it. But here we are, we're at the John Marsh house. This is the furthest distance I'm gonna get from my house. And then now I'm gonna start heading back. At this point, it's anybody's ball game, guys. Are you excited? Are you excited as I am to, uh, see the results of this oh man i just can't wait you know just a little side note i was flying my drone here once and it got attacked by a hawk go ahead and throw that footage in here I do have this new unrestricted sticker. I'm not sure how much range that's gonna eat up, but uh, guys, it's there. I'll have to take into account that probably weighs one or two grams. So, you know, maybe I just stop now and just delete my channel, we'll see. Anyways, guys, let's go, come on, come on. Twenty-two point seven miles, and now we're showing two bars. Which is funny because this bike will stay on four bars for a really long time, and then three bars is like a flash in the pan. It's on three bars for like five miles total. Nevertheless, we're at fifteen seven, fifty-seven volts under load. I'm not trying to skew the results one way or the other. I'm just riding it how I thought I rode it last time. Oh. <laughs> it was dramatic. People talk about e-bikes being banned and b-bikes being unsafe. Have you seen the way kids ride their bikes now? Doing wheelies in the oncoming traffic? How are they going to talk about banning e-bikes when these kids are riding in the middle of the road against traffic doing wheelies? Maybe that's a California thing. Do you guys have that in your area? Huge change in plan, guys. It's not going to change the overall course. But there's this new overpass here I've been dying to check out, and it looks like it's open now. Oh man, I can't wait to ride on this new overpass. Unrestricted. Wow, this is a huge, huge moment in my life right now. I don't think you guys know how happy this makes me. As of now, you have to ride about a quarter mile down the road and you do traverse this really busy corridor of, you have to go through a couple intersections that are really busy. So this intersect, this overpass right here lets you bypass all of that. This is awesome. Wow. This is so cool. Look how nice and brand new it is. This is the best day of my life, guys. You know, it's the little things in life, guys. You get up, you're younger, you know, you look forward to having time off school. You get older, and then it's stuff like this that makes you happy. One day, you're excited because you buy a new vacuum, and then you realize, you know what, gosh darn it, I'm a full-blown certified adult, and there's no turning back. And now, I just got, this is the best day of my life because there's a new bicycle overpass open. Whether it's official or not, I'm riding it. Okay, we're back on track now. This is the trail I would have been on before. There's a short little detour. If anything, it made the ride that's shaved off a half mile or so. But you know what? We're going to make it up one way or another. You know, it's funny reading the comments on these videos. Because one of the comments I had on the uh, review where it said the pedals scrape 
when you take corners and they're like, oh, just don't pedal on the corners. Just don't pedal on corners? That's, that's to me, that's ridiculous. Oh, the brakes, the, your brakes squeak? Eh, just don't use your brakes, problem solved. Like, come on, I'm not being a stickler here. This thing pedal scrapes too easy is my point. Ooh, we're down to one bar now. You get a false sense of security because you're on four bars for an extremely long time. You think you're gonna have all the range in the world. And then once you get on three, it just starts dropping faster. I'm telling you, once you get down to like, you know, the low, low voltage on these bikes, your time is very limited. We're at 30.6 miles, about 55 volts under load, one bar showing. I'm pretty sure we're gonna beat 34 miles, but how, by how much is gonna be the question. I live, I'm very fortunate to live where I do. I have hills, waterfront, flat ground, nice bike trails, great selection of drug dealers around here. I mean, they, drug prices are very competitive in Antioch. You're never gonna pay. You're never. You're never gonna pay full retail for drugs out here, guys. So we're at 33 miles now. I just saw it flash to zero bars once. So we're getting towards the end. There we are. Did it again. Well, since we're here, might as well do the planks of doom, right? We are getting towards the bitter end, guys. Right around 51 volts now. Thirty-six point nine miles right now. Man, this guy's flying on that scooter. This little section up here. I've tried so many times, I can never do it. There's a long section of curb right here. And my goal is to one of these days make it all the way across without falling off. So far I can do about one third of it. That's neither here nor there, guys. Still going. 37.5 miles, 50.9 volts. We are right, we're running on fumes right now. Put it down the pedal assist too. I did the same thing on my last ride, but I did it significantly earlier in the ride. So. The higher pedal assist level you are, the more the voltage will dip when you pedal. So I'm just trying to gradually get all the way down to the end instead of, if I put it at five or use the throttle right now, it'd immediately shut off. 38.2 miles, we're just gonna do some loops here until it dies. 38.3 miles. People probably think I'm weird just driving around in circles in a parking lot. Oh, and it's dead. That is it, guys. 38.5 miles. And boy, you immediately feel the weight of this bike when the power cuts off. So there you have it. 38.5 miles. I got about 4.4 miles. It doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot, but when you do the math, that's over 10% more range. You know, I'm sure some of that goes within the margin of error between the inserts and flat out, but I think that's kind of definitive proof that yes, the inserts are gonna take some of your range, but 
to answer of how much lead, you know, still up in the air. And I'm not complaining because I think honestly, 35 miles, 38 miles is a pretty good range. And most people that ride are probably gonna be okay with that. But anyways, guys, I wanted to do this experiment. The question has been answered. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna put the Tannis inserts back in. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, all that stuff. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.